Hi, I'm Mike Massimino. For the past few shuttle flights, we've taken you behind the scenes to meet the crews as they train for their flights and the people around the country who make those missions fly. But there's a lot of footage that we haven't shown you yet, so we'd like to take you back to some of our recent flights and introduce you to more of the people who do everything at NASA. We hope you enjoy this episode of NASA Behind the Scenes. We're here in the Mission Control Center. You're supporting STS-131. You're a two-time shuttle commander and two-time shuttle pilot, so you've flown in space four times. What were you doing here today, though, with these guys? What was going on? So today I was the ascent entry uh, Capcom for STS-131 crew, and we yes. had way too many malfunctions. <laughs> uh, SIM supervised her, uh, really hammered the, the crew and the Mission Control team with about 11 independent sure. failures, but uh, the team handled it well and the crew executed all their procedures uh, perfectly, so it was a, a good day. We're uh, handing over to the Orbit 2 team, right. and, uh, and uh, we're in good shape for uh, orbit operations. This is one of our final uh, simulations uh, before the actual launch. Right. And you'll be here, for, of course, doing your job for the actual launch as well. The actual as a, launch, I'll as be the Capcom. Capcom, and then I'll be also their uh, Capcom for their their orbit, uh, I'll be the shuttle orbit one uh, Capcom. Yeah. This works out extremely uh, well because uh, the the uh, 131 mission is very similar to the mission we just flew on uh, yeah. STS-128. So I, I'm familiar with all their tasks and right. ready to uh, support uh, anything that might come up with the with the mission as right. crew. And you mentioned failures. I mean, you've been you've been on the flight deck for as a commander or pilot for four launches. And how many, you know how many times you've been in here for a launch as a, as a Capcom? Uh, I'm not exactly sure. But a lot. Probably, a lot right? of okay. times, So yeah. have you ever seen anything on, in flight that's like, I mean, the Sims are always worse than the flight, yeah. right? Fortunately, the Sims are so far uh, worse than the flight for the most part, and, yeah. and that's a good thing. But uh, we do believe that uh, practicing all these uh, malfunctions is useful uh, training to uh, get us ready. Uh, right. it, puts, it stresses the team and the crew and uh, gets us ready for the real thing. We have had a few malfunctions for real, right. and so uh, we were well prepared to handle those. All right. But there is such a thing as uh, <laughs> excess, and sometimes uh, some soups do get a little carried away, and we understand that. All right, man, I know, I know you gotta go, but if you don't mind, you would tell me some interesting stuff as we would, because we're handing over, you would tell me what was going on. Um, you talked about some of the cool stuff you've done uh, earlier. We, we were looking at the shuttle flying over Baja, Right, on the, in the sim. And you mentioned you at one point in your life you actually raced in Baja. I right? did. I was on uh, pit crew uh, since I was about 15 years old down there in Baja uh, yeah. for the uh, Goodyear pit crew. Yeah. And, uh, and then uh, had the opportunity later on, uh, I was part of a racing team and I was a driver and raced in the uh, Baja uh, 1000, uh, racing the Baja 500 and some other races and then uh, some other desert races in uh, California and Arizona. So it's always uh, interesting to me when uh, we fly overhead in the uh, yeah. space shuttle to look yeah. down there and see the places uh, where we chewed up a little dirt down there. Yeah. Did that get you, now you flew F-18s and then you I flew did. space. So I know you flew a lot of other stuff too, but did that racing you think get you ready for what you're going did, fast in it, those other vehicles? It did. You know, there's a lot of uh, racers have to improvise. Uh, uh, you know, you have a plan for the race, but uh, things always happen with the, with the race cars, uh, yeah. with the pits, and so you have to impro improvise and adapt and overcome. And uh, so I think racing prepared me very well for uh, service in the Marine Corps yeah. and also for uh, at NASA to uh, fly uh, in the space shuttle. Cool stuff, man. It's all good. All right, you're the flight director for this STS-131 crew. What do you think of these guys and gals? It's a mixed crew, we got guys and gals. Crew Discovery is awesome. Uh, looking forward to work with uh, Dex and, yeah. and the rest of Discovery. Uh, this is going to be uh, one of the, the big logistics flights to uh, round out station before the end of the shuttle program. And I know these guys are ready to go do it. All right, so you went to Clarkson. And did you come right down here to work or did you do something else? I, uh, well, I grew up on a dairy farm. All right. And, uh, so I guess I basically grew up into a job there, a family owned farm operation. Yeah. And, uh, Were you supposed to stay there and work the farm? Yeah. And you, dad, you're screwing around by coming over here? Is that what happened? My dad was mad as hell when I told really? him I was going to engineering school. Yeah. And, and my brother and I left the farm and moved down here. But uh, I went to engineering school at Clarkson, got a bachelor's. Yeah. While I was there, I did an internship uh, uh, with the Johnson Space Center here in Houston. And, yeah. Uh, working on shuttle flight software. That's pretty cool. Staff stuff and uh, just kind of came down here and fell in love with the, uh, the people and the work. And, 
It's wow. been 16 years. Wow. And you said your brother, and I know your brother yeah. is a diver out at the pool, right? right. He works as a diver. And, you, and he claims that you dragged him down here. Is that true? Uh, to make a long story short, uh, I was looking forward to coming down here, and uh, yeah. he was working as an auto mechanic in town. All right. And uh, I basically said, one day I got the job offer. I went in at lunchtime and told him, uh, hey, I'm going to Houston. And I yeah. jokingly said I could use a roommate. And mm -hmm. uh, he came home at the end of the day and said, uh, I gave him my two weeks notice. I'm going to Houston with you. And wow. We, we dumped that on our parents uh, yeah. the same day. They lost both their hired hands on the farm, and was, uh, we moved to Houston. I was going to say, so did both of you cut out on the farm. So who's <laughs> running the farm? Uh, my parents sold it in 1999, so uh, they ran it themselves for six years. Oh, my goodness. And, uh, yeah, that's more than a full-time job. And yeah. They live in town now. Uh, We're in town. Uh, Richfield Springs, New York. Which oh, is, in New York, okay. It's like 14 miles from Cooperstown. Okay. And a uh, small town, and uh, they love it. I'm looking for a tile damage. What's your name? Dan Keenan. Ken Keenan? Dan. Dan? Yeah, Dan I'm a Keenan. tile guy. A TPS, tile guy? TPS engineer. Not, not, not bathrooms. No, no, You, know, you no. do bathrooms and no. these tiles. Oh, that's a, I just had the tile done in my kitchen. Oh, did you really? Can you do that too? Uh, I can do that. For you, I'll do it. Yeah, no, you're good. Ah. Okay, no, but what are you doing here? Um, Dan, what actually, do you got going? Looking, see, here's the problem. They all look the yeah. same. So now oh. I, have to, I found one that had a little minor gang, and I'm trying to track it down. find it. So right I'm down doing the it geographically. Okay. It's right there, there, so. Alright. You gotta be smart for this job, man. No, I, I, got the, I got through that hoop somehow. I got um, plenty of film and you got good there. eyes. Um I'll find it here shortly. How was things? How are things with you? Well, everything's good, man. I got no complaints. I'm glad to hear. I got no complaints. I hope you're finding the time. What are these guys doing over here, man? Let's go look. Oh, they're, uh, they pull the a carrier panel off. off. That's a... What does he got? A, what? a carrier panel with bib on it, flexible insulation blanket. All right. Yeah, Where'd they, they get that from? They pulled it off... Uh, Were they supposed to do that? No way. Yeah, this is... I'm going to have to get on them. <laughs> All right. All right. What is, and they got the paper. So, and Terry White's here, so we should be... Terry, oh, Terry's the man. I saw him in a wheel He world. is the man. He's the mayor of this place. All right. At least I think so. All right. So, uh, what they did is they pulled it off right here. Oh, okay. Yeah, why'd they do that? What'd they do, Terry? What happened? But that's where we're actually going to lift the orbiter when we get into the OPF. That's You're the kidding me, is that right there? Yes, that's it. No, actually, really? we're going to lift it with the floor lift, but that's where we attach it to the big side jacks. Yeah. That's where it attaches to That little to hole the right there? Yeah, that's the same I'm gonna hole. I'm going to zoom in on that one. That's the same hole. the guy's right up. There's a guy he's, going in there. What's he looking for, birds? Well, now he's <laughs> got to inspect. He's got, <laughs> he's looking at, he's he's got the, there's a lot of inspecting. Yeah, he's the NASA quality. He's going to inspect it before, before they put this in there, and then we'll actually put the attachment on the jack into that right. to support the orbiter for the next several months while we work on it. My goodness. That's the same. That's attachment. amazing. That's his right there. That's How the same deep is that thing? point we used to lift at the vertical assembly building. Oh, no kidding. Yeah. That's a, that's a pretty strong there, isn't it? If you want, to, do you want me to get your permission to go up there yeah, and look at it? Yeah, can I go up there and look at it? Look at that. Hey, it looks good to me. <laughs> it looks good to me. You check it off. Look at it, climbing up on the space shuttle. Can you imagine? Look how cool this is. You guys like doing this stuff? Oh, yeah. Too many okay. times you get to see all of it because no. of the structure. Yep. Yeah, yeah, exactly. What's going to happen now? You guys are going to uh, uh, tow it. Is that right? It's going to get Correct. towed? Yes. And then it's going to get uh, picked up uh, over by the SLF there, by, uh, right? Yeah, well, I'm just going to tow it all the way into OPF. Oh, yeah, it, goes, it doesn't yeah. go up on a... Uh, Oh, it'll go in there. there, and then there's three floor lifts that will lift it hydraulically to the maintenance height. We'll attach it here, and then we'll start disassembling from this flight and get the last of the astronauts' effects out, and the payload customers want their stuff out, and then we'll start right. gaining access to the vehicle. we we'll start taking, you know, got to put all the platforms in so we can take engines out, man, so...
it's going so slow. You know, it went a few a few hours ago. It was going 17,500 miles an hour, yeah. and now it's just going. Uh, does what? It's crawling. Three, three miles an hour. It's crawling. Well, there's Atlantis. How many miles it got on it? You know, I didn't read it. It's got like a lot. Uh, before this flight, yeah, it had 4,451 orbits, 114 million That's miles. That's probably got almost 120 now. Right, that'd be about that. 119, 108, 108, 108. All right. Wow. So this is you know prior to that mission. All right. Amazing.